react india so good afternoon everyone i hope you all are enjoying the conference so yesterday i think we have been talking about this topic uh, since some time now yesterday also i think we had a very we had two very amazing talks about that uh, where we discussed what is accessibility and why do we need accessibility correct and we also touched base upon like how can we make our apps more accessible i think in the first talk we talked about that so i'm trying to take the same topic to the next level where uh, we will discuss about how we can actually do the accessibility testing at the unit test level so that is all i am going to talk about in this lightning talk okay so now imagine that uh, that you are building a user facing website correct uh, maybe a global application as well uh, you are done with all the features that you want to build uh, you are ready to go live but in the background there is some accessibility team which are actually trying to check if your application is accessible enough or not and once they are done with the testing correct you I don't know how many people ha here have faced that you will get with a list of accessibility issue issues in your application, correct? The reason being, we never cared about that in the past. While we are writing code, while we are writing tests, we never cared about that, that our app should be accessible from the day one. So that means if I talk about numbers here, correct? And if I talk about business, uh, we saw the, the, the stats yesterday as well that there are like 15% of audience across the globe which need which have some accessibility issues correct that means if i am going live with the accessibility issues and if i talk about business i am going to lose money like that is why i am building an application correct i want to earn some money as well i want to actually take my application have some business out of it as well so that means we should do something to make accessibility uh in our day to day life as well in our day to day writing code as well and the whole idea here is like shift left your accessibility shift left in the sense i think we all would have heard this uh term shift left your test by like looking at the test pyramid and all and that is exactly what we are going to do shift left your accessibility by adding some accessibility checks at the unit level so we'll go through some code uh, uh i hope you all will be able to understand that before that a quick question correct uh, how many of you are using react testing library to write component tests a lot of us correct i i think that is a that is a main library that we use and how many of you actually use test ids to get hold of an element cool so quickly uh, showing up uh, an application here So I have a very small form here. Uh, uh, the left part of it is so. If you see the look and feel of it, correct, both are exactly same, no difference at all. But the left part of it is an inaccessible app. We'll talk about what is inaccessible here. The right part is an accessible app. Both looks exactly similar. What the application actually does it, I, if I say first name and say submit. welcome to react conf with your name similarly right hand side as well it's exactly similar functionality but left is inaccessible and i'll show you what is inaccessible here yeah so it's a very basic react component nothing fancy i wanted to keep it very simple so that we can get an idea what we are trying to say here so if you if you see the labels correct label and an input so labels are not bind together with the inputs here usually we use for attribute correct we have an id for a label so that they all work together if you use screen readers uh, screen readers will actually say that this is a first name as an input if you don't have an html4 attribute it will not say it will just say it's a text input so usually that is why we have label for html4 similarly if you see this i hope you all are able to see the code my button is actually the the thing that looks like a button is a div we we act, kind of do this mistake as well because we have to match the styling so we said oh it's not a button it's a div it's a span so that means i'm just saying it's a div on click of it submit my form 
But this is an inaccessible, correct? Again, if I use the screen reader, my screen reader firstly will never focus on it. They are not focusable till the time you don't say it's a tab index zero. But it will never call it as a button as well. So a user who is actually a, mainly a keyboard user, correct? will never get to know that I have to click over it. You can always, again, add ARIA role, blah, 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 but those are not the best practices. Now, if I see the tests here, so this, these are the tests that I've written. One is for, there's a component called inaccessible app, there's a component called accessible app. Both of these are working fine. And firstly, looking at the inaccessible app test, the test says, Whatever functionality we just saw, it welcomes the user after submitting the form. The problem lies in this particular line, correct? Line number 7, line number 10, and line number 13. Where we are saying that, get, the, get hold of that element by test IDs. Test IDs are actually nothing but a hack to actually try to get that element in your tests. It is actually bloating your HTML as well, correct? If you, if you add test IDs at 10 number of places, you add, it doesn't make any sense to the HTML attribute, correct? You're just trying to pass your test to add that attribute. And with that, if I actually change any element, say input to div or anything, the test will continue to pass till the time it actually get input values gets changed and all. So that means my test is not breaking for my accessibility issues here, correct? Now let's move to the accessible app here. And what is so accessible here? I think, again, covering very basic stuff. My input has IDs. My in labels has HTML4 attribute. My image tag has alt attribute. It's a button with a type submit, correct? So that means, again, if a screen reader reads it, it will read it like this is a text, first, first name. Second is a text, last name. It's a button which will submit the form. So as a screen reader user, I am able to relate that what I am trying to say, uh, what, I, what operation I am trying to do here. Now if you see the test here, it's all changed. It is not using test IDs anymore. Even in the code, you will not see there is a test ID. Why? What we are trying to get hold of is, is get the hold of that HTML element by its label text. That means get by label text first name. Imagine that I'm, I'm having a change feature, correct? I, and I'm playing around this particular form, and suddenly, because of some reason, I, I remove this. So what should happen now? My test will fail. My te if you see the failure, it actually says, expected the HTML found at first name to have Actually, not this one. Uh, see the first one, actually. I'll talk about the other one later. Found a label with the text of first name. However, no form control was found associated with that label. That's an accessibility issue, correct? So that means my test is failing because my application is not accessible. Similarly, if I'll just pass it again. Similar to that, now if I change my button to say div, My test fails. The reason being, again, this is a, it's a different error, but if you see, it says it, I'm unable to find an access, an accessible element with the role button and the name submit. So it is trying to find that element by its accessible roles. Because I'm using the query by role. If you see the documentation, it says that I'll try to find that element by its HTML role. So that is how we are trying to make that uh, code more accessible. If I go in like more details of it, if I say my button is disabled, the test continues to fail because it will not be able to find that element. And the good part is that the React testing library get role actually gives you the number of elements which you can actually find by roles. For example, if you see the first one, correct? You can find a text box with the name first name, you can find a text box with the name last name, and you can find a button name reset. Another thing, interesting part, if I say it's a hidden, it will continue to fail. Because as an accessibility point of view, as the user who is actually uh, 
trying to work with your application, it will not be able to see that element. So that means the test fails because of accessibility issues. So that is one part. Uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is, is a library, or I would say it's a package, called as user events. How many of you have used user events? Cool, a good number of people. So I think you will be able to relate that. Why do we use user event? Why not fire event? React testing library actually gives you fire event as well, correct? And that is exactly what I was using in, fire, in, in my inaccessible app. If you see here, fire event says that I am trying to change that input. It is more focused on how a developer is writing the code, correct? I am changing that input. And you, you have to pass that contract to that function, correct? That, oh, there is a target which has a value this. But in case of user event as well, correct? I don't need to do that. I can just say user.type, user.click, which is more, it is more uh, the way browser works actually rather than your code is working. So usually say use user events. Another interesting part that I actually just got to know a few days back is, let's say that a button, because of any reason, correct, have a style saying that I'm a pointer event none. That means, actually, even if I try to click on that uh, button, it will, it will never work. My user event actually fails, fails the test, saying that unable to perform pointer interaction at an element which is a pointer event none. That means you more closer to how, again, user is interacting with your application, correct? But if I change it, change instead of using user event, if I say, fi again, fire event dot click, might it is failing because of other reason. Let me check. Can I see it? Or is it not saving it? Ah, I'm adding disabled attribute here. So fire event dot click actually did not check for pointer events. It passed. Again, another kind of accessibility issue, but your tests are telling you which what you are doing wrong here, and you should make that change. Last but not least, another thing that I quickly touch base upon is that there is this is a business test, correct? You have a functionality that if I add a first name and a last name, I click submit, it will give me that message. But there are libraries, packages, which actually test a basic accessibility checks for you by default. And one of those that I'm using is, is X, correct? There is X, there is Aqua, there is Chai. I think more, a lot of commonly used libraries gives you that kind of a wrapper abstraction as well. I'm using Vt as a test a runner here. So I'm using vtest.x. And that if you see the test here, correct? The basic test I'm writing, it, it, checks, it checks the accessibility issues in your app. And the assertion says that this particular container or this particular app should, not, should have no violations. And what kind of violations you, you can get, correct? Now if I try to remove HTML4 attribute from here, my test fails, saying that expected the HTML found at this to have no violation, but it has these violations. Similarly, if I just take this image out of that condition, correct, and remove that alt tag, it fails for that reason saying that I expect that image to have an alt tag. So that means all these kind of a basic checks you can introduce at the unit level. This, this, I, these kind of library actually do much more than that. If you have ARIA roles, uh, ARIA popovers, it actually checks, tells you that you don't have a control for that and, and so on. I can go in detail of that as well, but you can explore for those uh, definitely. Now moving back to our slides, correct? Uh, so writing these kind of tests, we actually shifted left accessibility testing. So that means you might not get a plethora of accessibility issues when you want to go live, correct? You might have few which are easily solvable, not this kind of access. 
So these are few references, quick references. Uh, the code that I just shared is available on this GitHub uh, link. And before, thank you, I actually want to show you something. Um, so this is uh, looking at the advantages of this approach, correct? Uh, the ThoughtWorks Tech Radar, which uh, volume 29, which just got published ya last week itself. So this actually came, has came up as a new blip. Uh, which says that uh, accessibility aware component test design. Uh, that is exactly what I discussed, uh, where you use it, why you use it and all. So you can always have a look into that as well. So with that, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, that's all I wanted to share. I'm Vishal Sharma. Uh, reach out to me if you have any questions. This is my LinkedIn. I try to write stuff nowadays. Uh, that's a new thing that I'm trying to figure out how to do. So I'll try to write this as well there. So before we uh, go, <laughs> I would like to invite my other ThoughtWorks friends uh, to talk a little bit more about what ThoughtWorks is, how do we work and all. So if you folks can quickly play that video, please. To be extraordinary in the world of technology, ordinary isn't good enough. It takes extra, extra strategy, extra design, extra engineering. For more than 28 years, ThoughtWorks has been the technology consultancy where extra overcomes ordinary. So if your digital journey needs a partner who will provide the extra, we've got you covered. Because we're all about delivering extraordinary impact together. Cool. So you have met me now, correct? If I reintroduce myself, I'm Vishal Sharma. I'm a lead consultant in ThoughtWorks. I also hold a responsibility to drive the India front end community with one of my partner. So we try to do multiple events with front end community and also that that's about me. I think Pramida is next in the list. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, for those of you who missed my panel discussion yesterday, I want to reintroduce myself. I am Pramida. I am currently playing engineering director role at uh, ThoughtWorks Hyderabad. Uh, I am a mother of uh, two and I love painting and gardening. Hi everyone. My name is Ravinder Mahajan. I am a lead consultant with ThoughtWorks and as Vishal said, I also hold the responsibility of representing ThoughtWorks India front-end community. Uh, to introduce more about myself, I'm a father of four, and to talk about the organization, uh, four years, not four kids, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I, I saw some of the faces. Yeah. So yeah, I think to talk a little about ThoughtWorks, we are one of the most leading uh, consulting organizations across the globe, around 50 plus offices that we have. Uh, we have multiple open source contributions, we come up with multiple conferences, and we are proud silver, silver sponsors for the React India 2023. Hey, how many of you have heard of ThoughtWorks? Hey, nice. good, good number. Thank you all folks. Uh, so we have a good community space and I think that you would have uh, heard about a lot of people like our chief scientist Martin Fowler, CTO Rebecca Parsons and the author and speaker and well-known software architect Neil Ford. But not just these people. What makes us so special is everyone, all the people at ThoughtWorks actually. So I walk into the office and then uh, there will be one or the other person who inspires me or motivates me daily. Uh, someone is passionate about data privacy. It doesn't mean that we are working on the data privacy for our clients or anything, but even that passion itself that drives them uh, and then forms a community and a very open culture to talk anything, uh, what, you, what your mind says. And if you wanted to work on something cool, uh, we are allowed to do it and then it's like it's the awesome culture that we have and the great communities and the vibrant called unfold ui uh, so we just had that in july our volume 2 of unfold ui uh, where uh, it's mostly internal but we invite external audience for sure uh, and, re and all the speaker videos and all actually is published on the youtube channel just search for unfold ui event mostly we'll, we'll, we're trying to do it uh, once per six months, so, so hopefully something new version will be coming up early next year. That is what we are trying. Uh, apart from that, if you have any questions about ThoughtWorks, do reach out to three of us. We are here till tomorrow. Uh, we are hiring as well, so check out our job portal. Uh, there is a scanner outside, scan it, it will take you to that link as well. And do wait for my talk. Uh, I think it's a panel <laughs> discussion end of the day. I'd love to see you all. Thank you.
Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot.